Hey y'all, it's Raj with EV365 and we're excited about this one. We're gonna try to give you as unbiased of a one-year review as we can on the Rivian R1T. All right, y'all, there it is. That's our Rivian R1T. And as you can tell by the plate, it is the official company vehicle of EV365. And we got this vehicle in December of 2022. So we've had it for a while and we actually haven't done a ton of content on it because I knew I was going to hold on to it. So I focused in on some of the other EVs that we got throughout the year and all have been great. Um, but we definitely made the decision early to keep this one and nothing's changed since then. Now, of course, um, me driving the truck and knowing that that's what I wanted and a truck of this size uh, makes the difference. Obviously, if we wanted a sedan or a smaller crossover, the decision might have been different, but I'm not going to hide the headline here. Um, if you do want a pickup truck that's electric, um, I fully recommend the Rivian and I think it's a fantastic vehicle. Um, and I think if you talk to any Rivian owner out there, for the most part, they're all going to tell you the same. Um, and as you can see, we got this Rivian in the LCAP granite, but we got it wrapped with the Expel Stealth Wrap. And Rivian does have a partnership with Expel. So we were able to do that for $4,500, um, which is still quite a bit, but much cheaper than what it would be if you just walked into a uh, Stealth Wrap place. Um, and I'm not sure if they're still offering it. I'm pretty sure they are. And on their website, when you order the car, um, they do give you the option to wrap the front, not necessarily in stealth, but just in a protective uh, wrap. So, but yeah, we did the wrap just because a lot of the Rivian paints are great. And they were, the way they designed those paints was to change color and kind of fit the environment and fit the Rivian brand. Um, but they were just a little too shiny for me. So I think it just looks fantastic with this matte paint. And you can see all the different Rivian branding on it. Um, you know, the yellow badging, of course, the signature Rivian lights here. I'm gonna bust out the key for y'all. And just so y'all see the key, it is this cool little carabiner. Um, and I will say that key probably is a little large um, for your pocket, but you'll get used to it. Um, it only comes with one of those. It comes with two key cards. Um, let's hit the unlock. And there you see that signature lighting going right there. Um, and I just think that looks great. That's, that's maybe one piece that some people like the way the front looks. Some people don't, but we do like it over here at EV365. Um, and then it does come with two key cards as well. Um, and then of course you can, um, add you, your spouse or any other drivers that you want to be able to control the vehicle through their phone. Um, and Rivian does have a wristband that came with the, the first, uh, launch edition vehicles i'm not sure that they've started selling that yet to folks but i hope they I hope they do that would be fantastic it's just like a wristband you can wear and acts as a sport key essentially that's waterproof you can swim with it and go on adventures and things like that um and here's the back of the truck um and here's one of the things our rivian um was supposed to come with the the automatic tonneau cover and we fit right into that period right after they discontinued it. So we ended up not getting an automatic tonneau cover. Um, we ended up getting their manual one, which is great. And we do have a separate video on that. So check that out. Um, but I do wish that that automatic tonneau cover came with it because it, you know, with the manual, you still need to pull it out. You got to find a place to store it. It does fit in the gear tunnel. But if you've got stuff in the gear tunnel, um, it may not fit in there and it doesn't it doesn't actually quite fit in the bed of the truck straight so you got to do it at an angle if you want to store it in the bed of the truck and here speaking of the gear tunnel is right here and you can see we do use this rivian as a work truck for my day job so you're going to see some hard hats in there um and i'll go open up let's go open up that other side of the uh of the uh gear tunnel here i'm gonna pop that hood you see you hit that button it kind of comes down soft it's got this uh, cover here, so it covers the, uh, the hinges, which is nice and flat. And then that gives you a full seven feet of uh, flatbed back there when, the, when, the, the, when the, the back of the truck is open. Otherwise, you are at four and a half feet. Um, and we did add this. There's a lot of great aftermarket stuff. We added this rubber cover here. I've got one underneath that I pull out to cover this because these plastics are a little scratchy. That's my technical term. 
Um, so if you do get a truck like this and you're worried about scratches in the, in the bed, which you're gonna get some no matter what, um, I definitely recommend getting an aftermarket uh, bed cover and there's a ton of them out there. And before we get to that gear tunnel, let's, we might as well look at this. Um, this is the, the air compressor and then you can also connect your gear guard cable there. Um, so if you have a bike or something in the back, you can connect it and alarm will go off if somebody tries to take it. But that compressor has been awesome. We're able to fill up the tires of the Rivian, uh, of our family's vehicles, uh, tubes when we're going swimming and things like that. And then you've got two outlets back here in the back as well. You got a bunch of great hooks and connectors in the back. So if you want to use bungee cords or anything like that. And then we did add the two crossbars to the back of the truck. And we put a rooftop tent up there. You can put your bike up there and all kinds of different stuff. And we're going to have a separate uh, video about the rooftop tent. So stay tuned for that. Um, and here, let's get this gear tunnel opened over here. And the crossbars are designed awesome. They... Um, you can just, they lock in place, but you can pop them off. They, they squeeze to a little smaller shape and you can store them. Again, there's a lot of cool aftermarket storage units for those where you can just hang them on the wall. And then there are actually two um, connectors up here or four, I should say on either side. So you can put the gear tunnel. I mean, you can put the crossbars up top as well. Um, and there's the gear tunnel open. And yeah, for those of the, that have watched my sampling video, you can see that I've got my, stick that we sample sample wastewater it with in there and that's a pretty long stick and it expands out but it fits in that gear tunnel um and I, i've got a step stool in there that we use maybe to get back into the back of the bed every now and then but really it's mainly for my kids and for my parents um to use and that all fits in there and there's still plenty of room in that gear tunnel which is great um and one thing i forgot to mention there is a storage space in the bed of the truck if you don't get the spare tire, it's under this mat that I've got. We do have the spare and it is a full, full size spare. It comes with the, uh, with the rim and everything. And we've got the 21 inch wheels, which are the most efficient. And I've got the, uh, arrow covers on there, but I did get the cap. So you can pop those arrow covers off if you want and kind of get a, just a more classic look on the wheels. So we may actually do that, um, and put a video together just so y'all can see how those look. Um, and then of course here at the front, the Rivian is one of the vehicles that still has a trunk. I know some vehicles aren't putting it. There you go. And look at that front right there. And it's a pretty sizable front. Got some paperwork in there. Um, and we got some mats put in there as well. And then it even has this bottom over here. So we've got our, our charging cable our bungee cords, we've got a J1772 to test the adapter in there. Um, and there's also a drain plug um, in there. So you put ice in here and tailgate and, uh, and it'll, it'll drain through that plug. And if you wanna see the video on these mats, um, check it out, we've got one on that as well. Uh, let's get that closed. And you can see everything's kind of automatic and controlled. The, I will say the, the, the back of the truck, the tailgate, you do need to lift that up yourself. It'll come down soft, but you do have to push it up. And that's one thing that maybe Rivian can update the design on future vehicles, because you got to lift it up just by holding the back of the truck. Obviously that can get dirty. Hands get pretty dirty sometimes. Um, but that's part of owning a truck, right? Um, and then let me show you the doors. And in general, why don't we look at this first? The build of the Rivian, uh, is solid it feels solid and looks solid but the one thing i will say depending on your truck um some people do have some issues with just general build quality like seams being of different sizes and things like that so me for example when these door handles were pushed in mine were pushed in a little bit and you can tell that that's not the way they were meant to be my hood was actually sticking up a little more than it could and now you can see that's a, a lot cleaner um but you know that was all covered by warranty and Rivian was great they fixed that um no problem and i will say depending on where you're located and how far your service center is uh working with the service centers can be super easy or it can be difficult or it can be time consuming um i've got my brother who's in san francisco and he hasn't had the best of luck with his service center um as far as getting things fixed and even things coming back 
not working that were working after he's picked up the vehicle and of course waiting a long time for his appointment and we've got the same issue in austin now we do wait a long time for the appointment um, but in general they've been able to fix all the things that i've needed to fix and it's been pretty minor i mean it was the the some of the panel gaps um i thought i had some wind issue going on they did try to fix that but it's still kind of there it's not super loud and it may have just been one of those things where I was just being too picky when I first got the vehicle because now I don't even notice it. Um, and then a few other things here and there that they've worked on, but they've done great with all that. And they give you a rental or a loaner if you need it. Um, and here's the charge port over here. Let's get that open. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. man, I need to unlock the truck. Here's the charge port. And you can see it's automated. Got that J1772 and CCS connector. And uh, Rivian is going to switch over to NAC, so they'll be sending out adapters to use this at Tesla chargers. Um, in future vehicles, we'll obviously have that Tesla connector. Um, and let's open the doors. You know, I always like to check these. Um, and I will say one thing is the doors are solidly built, but, Either they are so heavy, that one you can see closed solid, but this back one, I think it's more to do with the seals and the, um, the air being pushed out than it does the actual alignment of the door. But sometimes when you close it, you do have to give it quite a bit of a push to close, but you can see that closed pretty well and I'm probably just used to it now. Um, but that's something I know a lot of owners have noticed when they first get the vehicle. But a lot of us folks are coming from sedans and smaller vehicles and moving into a large truck. Um, as an example, I came from a Mini Cooper SE and then before that, a small Lexus CT. So um, shifting over to a truck, that's uh, that's quite a change. So, um, so yeah, that's just some minor things that you do need to get used to with the truck. So there it is, that's the Rivian R1T from the outside. Now we'll just take it for a drive and we'll talk about everything else while we're driving it around. All right, y'all, so we're in the Rivian driving it around. And um, yeah, the inside of the Rivian, the first thing everybody notices when they first get in is how nice it looks on the inside. They have did a great job designing the inside of the vehicle. They've got this ash wood kind of around on the dash and over here on the doors and stuff. And it just looks really quality. And you can get that wood in different colors. Um, we've got it in this dark ash, which I think looks fantastic. Um, and we got the dark interior. They've got, of course, different colors as well. And Rivian's kind of changed the pricing on how they do the interior now. But I do think the dark ash with the dark interior is still their kind of their baseline offering. And for me personally, that works out great because it, because it's my favorite one. Um, and and just the materials are premium. It's all kind of soft touch, uh, faux leather type of material. You've got this anthracite type of uh, felt feeling liner um, and then of course you've got this window moonroof type thing Not, it doesn't open um, but that gives you an awesome just panoramic view from the top and I don't uh, you know I keep it covered a lot of the times here in Texas just because it's so hot and I did buy an aftermarket cover for that I do wish Rivian kind of had an automatic cover for that and really a lot of EV companies in general um, I wish that was something they would do um, but yeah, just, just right when you sit in the vehicle, you can just see how premium it is. The seats are super comfortable. Um, they're all made out of that faux leather as well. Uh, front and back seats, just very comfortable. Um, the one area where I think they kind of missed on the interior is the handles of the door, which again, this is something you, you touch every time you get in and out of the vehicle. So they went with a plastic material. Um, and sometimes when you yank on it, it does creak a little bit. So I wish they, they went a little more premium on that. Um, you know, maybe a soft touch type of material um, that didn't have that creak with it. But, you know, they might have done that just because it's something that gets gets a lot of uh, use. So maybe it's easier to clean and things like that. But yeah, that's the one area on the inside. I wish they went a little more premium. Um, and then quality wise or, or premium wise, I should say, just with offerings, the Rivian has everything I've ever wanted inside of a vehicle, you know, just from comfort, it's got heated steering wheel, heated seats front and back, uh, ventilated seats in the front. Um, you've got controls for the, the climate control in the front. The folks in the back can control theirs if you give them control. Um, 
yeah, so it's just got all the premium features you want. You can control your cameras. There's cameras all over the vehicle. Um, so like when you're trying to park the truck in your garage and things like that, you can access the cameras that you need to access. And that's something I haven't seen in a lot of vehicles or a lot of vehicles haven't executed it quite right. And so when I go into other vehicles from outside of the Rivian, to me, I just think like that should be something that's obvious and eat, um, and should be in all the vehicles. And when they don't have it, it's actually a little frustrating. So Rivian spoiled me um, in that aspect. So they did great there. And, and that kind of talks to how well they've done with their software. For me, with all the EVs we've tested out, the Rivian one, the Rivian software for me has been the most intuitive to use. I've never had trouble finding stuff on the screens and just the way they've laid everything out, the way you get move through the screens, the icons, it's just all designed and functions really well to me. Um, yeah, for me, it's my favorite uh, OS as far as just operating it is concerned you know and obviously Rivian will continue to improve the uh you know how fast it responds and things like that but even in that regard i haven't had um issues with controlling it yeah and then the the stereo for me has been great i've got the original meridian system uh that came with the Rivian. they're now doing an in-house um version of the stereo which i've heard that one as well and they both sound good to me. You can control everything through the EQ. You can save your set if you want. They've got some presets. Um, and for me, if I can set that EQ to the smiley face, it works perfect for the music that I listen to, which is kind of rock music, you know, from the 80s. And uh, and it's it works great for that for me. So I, I don't, I'm not looking for anything more out of that, the sound system uh, than what it's given me. And I, I think it does sound good. Um, and uh, yeah, and then they put all these unique little features in there. You've got the Bluetooth speaker here at the bottom. Uh, you don't have to get that anymore and you can get storage space down there. Uh, but I do like having that Bluetooth speaker. It comes in handy for me. Again, like I said, I like to listen to music. So it's good just to have that when you're on a picnic or out camping or something like that. And what's cool is that that speaker doubles up and, or you can use it to charge your phones and stuff like that. It has a USB-C port on it. So yeah, so just another cool thing for you to do. And of course, Rivian did a bunch of unique things like that in the car, like the flashlight. Um, and you can access the gear tunnel from the middle over here. Um, one thing they didn't nail was their uh, inductive charger down here that's on the, on the armrest. Um, we'll give you a quick glimpse of that. And I've got another video of the aftermarket um, charger that I got from T-Raps, which works great and you can charge two phones on that. So check that out. But they admitted that that was something they just didn't design quite right. And uh, and so they, I don't think they've improved on that yet, but maybe that's coming. Um, and another thing they probably didn't, obviously didn't nail was the automatic tonneau cover. So that's probably one of the, the few things that they haven't really nailed on the inside, but otherwise um, it's really roomy in the front. You can see I'm driving, this is my normal kind of seated position. And we're always hauling around our girls back there when we're on road trips my wife sits back there with them and they've got plenty of room you know we'll move this seat up a little bit plenty of room in the back they're always real comfortable and this is kind of the the vehicle we opt to take on road trips now just because it's so roomy and comfy for them even in the back which is great yeah and then getting in and out of the vehicle that was one of the concerns i did have you know with having a nine-year-old and a five-year-old um and also, you know, my uh, parents who are older now kind of getting out of, in and out of the vehicle, but they're all able to do it. Even my five-year-old can climb into the vehicle because Rivian added this cool feature called kneel, kneel mode where it goes into its lowest setting. You know, the Rivian can kind of adjust its height um, and it'll go into its lowest setting when you hit into park, making it easier to get in and out of. And I do have room for a little stool that I keep in the gear tunnel. Um, and that's really more for my parents and they can use that to get in and out. So it's uh, just even having that gear tunnel makes something that could be an issue, uh, kind of a non-issue. So um, yeah, just another cool thing, another feature of the Rivian that kind of helps you address a problem that you might have. For me, driving wise, I have had no issues transitioning from sedans over to a truck. This is my first truck. Um, and part of the, the big reason for that is because the Rivian just handles so well. Um, that I, you know, even when I'm darting in and out of traffic, I, I never feel like I'm carrying around this much length, um, which has been great. The only time you maybe kind of feel it for me has been when you're trying to park. Um, you know, I've got to park into kind of a tight garage spot 
but it does fit in my garage. Um, you know, I've got about 22 feet of, of clearance, so I can get the Rivian in there. Um, and I'll show you kind of a top view of how I got to maneuver in and out, but it kind of shows you that even with the length of the truck in kind of a unique maneuvering type of uh, path that I've got to take, the Rivian can handle it. And again, that's preference. You know, I had a neighbor that took delivery of the R1S about a year ago, and he thought the ride was a little too stiff for him or a little too rough. So he uh, he didn't end up holding on to it. But every for everybody, it's kind of preference. You know, I kind of like that feel of the truck drive and kind of feeling the road and the bumps. And then of course you can adjust the softness and tightness and things like that. Um, with the Rivian, you can change the drive modes on the truck. Um, you know, I, I typically drive in all purpose mode, uh, which has all four wheel, all four motors going. And, um, or you can, you know, when you're on a road trip, you can go into conserve mode where it's just using, um, two of the motors. Um, I think it's just going front wheel drive at that time. And, um, and you get a little more efficiency that way. And speaking of efficiency, you know, here in Texas, we can drive pretty fast. So I haven't gotten quite the 340 miles that the Rivian now says I should be getting, you know, with some software updates, which that's something Rivian did initially. This was kind of rated at 315, 316 on the road tires that I've got. And they did some software updates to improve that efficiency. So now my guessometer shows about 340 to 348. And I don't quite hit that. I usually get closer to 300. But it's because here we're driving about 80 miles an hour plus on the highways. And that obviously is going to eat up quite a bit of juice. And then uh, we're running quite a bit of AC in the summer. But, uh, you know, if I drove about 70 to 60, you know, 65 to 70, um, with 70 being the top speed, I would I would hit pretty close to 340 based on the efficiency I'm getting. Um, and that's something with a big vehicle, like a truck, you're not gonna get the best uh, efficiency. You know, I usually get it anywhere between two to 2.4 uh, miles per kilowatt hour. You know, in a, in a sedan or a car, you're gonna get closer to three or more. And that's something I think Rivian hopefully will improve on as the time goes on in all, in all EV manufacturers in general is just keep working on improving that efficiency. Um, and it does have a big battery pack. This one's got 134 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, which uh, which is why it can still get you that, that large range number of 300 miles or more. Um, yeah, charging's been great. You know, you can get a top charging speed. It's rated at 220 kilowatts. Um, and Rivian does get close to that. You'll get about 210-ish for a little while on that charging curve. And I've done some videos uh, of the charging curve and then it just drops off and kind of goes gradual after that. But for me, most of my charging I do at home, you know, I'd say 95% plus. And really for all EV owners, if you can charge at home, that just makes life super easy. Uh, and you never have to go to a gas station. You're not worried about public charging. But when you do need a public charge in the Rivian, for me so far, it's been uh, very painless. The only issues you run into are if you're running into issues uh, with the charging stations themselves. And of course now, Rivian has access to the Tesla supercharger network. Um, I just got the email from them uh, reserving my adapter, which they're gonna send to us uh, for free. Um, and that may take a little while, so I have ordered a, a third party adapter to try out um, as well. Um, so maybe I'll get that one before the, the one that Rivian and Tesla are sending out. So yeah, all that's been great. And, um, and again, controlling all the driving modes, controlling the regen, which I love Rivian's regen. I think it feels great. My one pedal driving in this vehicle is awesome. And I keep it on the highest regen setting because I'm used to that now. But you can get to the low one, um, which if you're not used to regen driving, um, you can start off on that low and just kind of work your way to the high setting. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the regen is really good and it comes to a full stop and holds you um, at that full stop when you're at traffic lights, even on a hill, um, going uphill or downhill, which is great. Yeah, so in general, just for me, the drive of the Rivian, I've been very happy with it. Um, and yeah, and one thing I wanted to point out is, uh, you know, with the EV market kind of, the used EV market in general, kind of slowing down a little bit. If you want to get into a Rivian, like an R1T right now, you can find some good deals on um, on used ones. So that's something I'd recommend for people to take a look at. Uh, even for those of you that are like super excited about the R2, 
um, that's coming out in a couple years, uh, take a look at the R1S's that are out there and you'll get something that's gonna be way more loaded than the baseline R2, um, maybe for about the same price. Uh, you know, you may have like 20,000 miles or something on it already, but um, I think that's a, a good way to go if you're interested in getting into a Rivian. And then Rivian themselves always, you know, the pricing has changed a little bit. Uh, they do offer some good deals um, on their lease deals if you're interested. So uh, yeah, there's a, there's a <clears throat> definitely a bunch of different avenues to get into the Rivian. And like with all new auto manufacturers, and we've learned quite a bit, you know, recently from all the Fisker news is uh, same thing with Rivian. There's still a new company. So you got to go in understanding there's that risk of still being an early adopter um, on, on whether the company is going to be able to continue. But I think, you know, over the past several years and the past year and a half that they've started to deliver vehicles or the past two years now, uh, just the way they've responded to doing software updates, the way they've responded to addressing customer concerns and communicating and things like that. It feels like Rivian is at least managing the company in a manner where you can have a little more confidence in than maybe what we've seen uh, with Fisker. So, but again, there's always that risk for, for new companies, right? Uh, so you just got to consider that. And, and if that's something that you're not, uh, you don't have the appetite for, just hold on, you know, just hold on. Uh, maybe drive it, get another EV if you want to get into an EV and then and then get into a Rivian when it's time. Oh yeah, and one thing I wanted to mention that Rivian's done really well is their branding, right? They branded their vehicles to be adventure vehicles, outdoor vehicles. Um, and you can't help but kind of get caught up in that when you get a Rivian. And, you know, I bought a rooftop tent with the purpose of throwing it on the back of the Rivian and going camping. Uh, my buddy who just got a Rivian, he was already starting to get back into mountain biking and him getting the Rivian just kind of kicked him into overdrive. And, uh, and now he, you know, he even took it off-roading. He's never done that before. So, you know, it just kind of moves you into that, that outdoor adventure lifestyle, which is, which is really kind of cool. And it's really helped brand loyalty with Rivian. They're rated the highest company um, in brand loyalty and folks that would go back and buy another Rivian. And that speak, speaks to obviously their branding and obviously speaks to the, the quality of their vehicles as well. And for me, I use the Rivian for both fun, for you know just basic day-to-day -day needs with the family, um, and even for work. And for me, it's functioned great as a work truck. Um, I'm an environmental consultant and engineer, and um, you know for the things I need to do and haul around like coolers and sample equipment and gear like that, I'm able to do it. Just recently, I was out soil sampling, and of course, my client neglected to tell me that the terrain I was sampling was gonna be pretty rough. Um, so when I got out there, you know, I was in the Rivian, so I was still able to get my project done, but I was actually doing some, some pretty decent off-roading. Um, and I'll, I'll show y'all a clip of, uh, of that video, but yeah, if I was in any other electric vehicle, um, obviously I wouldn't have been able to do that. And honestly, if I was in any other gas vehicle other than like a Jeep or something like that, I might've been in trouble. Um, but the Rivian allowed me to do that and finish that project, which was, which was pretty awesome. So yeah, anyways guys, that's, uh, yeah, like I said, that's the quick and dirty on the Rivian for a year and a half. Um, I definitely recommend it. Um, and this is just from a personal owner's use. I've been really happy with it, uh, enjoy driving it, and really have not had any major issues with it. So again, if you've got questions, pop them into the comments below and I will be sure to answer them. And thanks for watching. Hang loose, y'all.